In this video we're going to be covering the how to use shotgun software uh, and the way it's been set up for uh, magic at Miami Dade College. The, the initial point, uh, and we're starting from scratch, this is the full project management uh, walkthrough. So the first thing that needs to happen is we need to go to the data one or the M drive and this is where all the production files are going to live inside of Magic Shotgun. So all the production folders are here and within these folders for the respective project is where all production files are. Now for game engines, uh, specifically for Unity, since we're going to be using Unity Colab, it's going to be a little bit uh, different than say for example a film. A film is going to have everything in this folder. It's going to have renders, it's going to have assets, it's going to have uh, caches, uh, concept art, things of that nature. But a game is a little bit different in the sense that uh, Unity Colab is going to have a copy of the entire of the project, the Unity project, and a lot of work happens inside of the context of the Unity project itself. So for example, if you're creating levels and you're creating um, maybe level specific lighting or effects, uh, you're creating scripts for uh, things of that nature, that's all going to be inside of the Unity project. The Unity project is probably going to be either on, on uh, your desktop or it'll be in your, your personal network drive. Um, to, and the project is going to be persisted by Unity Colab up in the cloud. So we'll talk about the specifics of how to use the Unity engine in the context of all this um, later. Right now what we're going to focus is on the initial production, uh, the pre-production, and then the production of uh, 3D assets and perhaps concepts as well. So with that in mind, what's going to live in here is going to be generally a lot of metadata, uh, a lot of pre-production data, and asset data. Uh, and then they'll be exported to FBXs, which will live here. And then they'll be imported into the Unity project, which lives outside of this whole structure. So to begin, uh, when you go into your project, uh, you want to go into the admin folder, uh, find project members, spreadsheet, and fill this out. Uh, this is going to allow me to generate all of the user accounts. Uh, and then it'll shoot an email to everybody to, to create their passwords. So you want to give first, uh, sorry, it should be the name of this one field that's not first and last. And then the login, uh, you want it to be similar, you want it to be the same as the MDC login, which is the first half, the first part of the email address. And this is the email that's going to be used <clears throat> to uh, for by Shotgun to automatically send out an email to prompt for the account creation and password setting. Uh, for permissions group, uh, managers will be instructors and production managers. Uh, they'll have uh, elevated privileges. Everyone else would be an artist that will be able to stay focused on their particular tasks. Uh, and then for project, uh, you just want to make sure to select your project. I didn't put the demo project in here. It doesn't show up, but let's just pretend it's book B. Now, if these two things aren't going to change, let's say, for example, you've already done all your managers, and now this is it's just going to be maybe 20 or 30 artists, uh, the project shouldn't change. What you can do is you can just shift select them both and drag down uh, instead of having to go into each one and select the particular thing. So that's just a little helpful tip. So once this is filled out, um, you'll notify me. I'll generate the accounts, and then we'll have all of the accounts ready, and uh, the team will be ready to begin work on Shotgun. The asset list comes after all the pre-production planning, and you've done, you've you've done your your storyboards, and you understand exactly what you're going to build, and then we'll populate the asset list. And I could use this to 
create all of the assets that need to be created in bulk uh, inside of Shotgun. So the first step in the daily workflow is going to be to log into the Shotgun desktop application. Uh, in order to do that, you want to make sure you're pointing at the right URL, which is the same as the website here, which is magicmdc.shotgunstudio.com. And then you want to put in your, your username, and then you want to put in your password. Now the, this will log you into the desktop application and the desktop application handles the integration between the Shotgun Studio uh, site and your desktop. Like it allows the inner communication with your file system and the, <clears throat> and the remote application. So it's very important that uh, this step is done otherwise everything else will not work. So depending on your role, you'll either see, if you're a manager, you'll probably see all the projects. If you're, if you're an artist, you'll see specifically the project you're assigned to. Um, so it's very important to go into the project that you're going to be working on. So you just click on it. And what you're going to see is this loading uh, animation, which is downloading the configuration and setting things up. Once everything sets up successfully, you'll see the icons of all the actually integrated applications that you could launch from this uh, shotgun desktop application. Uh, and this basically just means you're, you're connected and you're good to go. No errors have happened. So that's the very important first step. Um, and if you don't see that menu for some reason, it, it's, it always, once you log in, it creates this little icon in the uh, system tray area. With that done, now we can move on to signing into the web, uh, into the uh, web application. Okay, and again, depending on your perspective, it's going to show you the different uh, projects that you're going to be working on. So we're going to be focusing here on the demo game. So what's going to happen here is you're going to see uh, an overview of the project. Nothing has been happening here so far. Um, and here you're going to see the the team, the people that you're on. So let's add a couple team members. This would have been done in bulk from the spreadsheet. I'm just going to add a couple fake people here so that I can uh, fully demo the capabilities. Okay, so here's our team. Uh, we've got uh, three people, uh, two artists and one manager. Um, for games, we're basically going to be looking at three important parts at first, where we have games, levels, and assets. So games, everything is plural up here, but games, you really just have the, the one game uh, tracked as a single entity. That entity has multiple tasks. So this is the global status for the game. So when this goes to completed, that means that the game is completely done. It's built and ready for deployment. It's been tested and it's good to go. All of these things have happened. Um, so when the project starts, we just set it to in progress. So we're broken down into three steps or three pipeline steps, pre-production, production, and post-production. So the way to work with this is going to be, and it's going to be the same pattern over and over again. So and that pattern for tasks is as follows. You have a status. Uh, you can set the status waiting to start, meaning that perhaps it has a dependency. It hasn't really been looked at. Ready to start means that all dependencies are satisfied and work is ready to begin. In progress means that the assignee is actively working on this thing. Pending review means that I want you to look at some work related to the task or, or the artist wants uh, the production manager or the instructor to look at some work and give them a review. Final means that it's been reviewed and it's and it's and it's good to go. Uh, it's done. On hold 
uh, means some something happened. Maybe the due to the production schedule or limitations, this particular task is not going to happen, or maybe it has a technical block that is going to be put on hold while other things are addressed. Not applicable means that this particular task uh, is just there's no work going to be done for this task. So that's the first part of the pattern. The second part is we have the task name. Uh, the task name, we can click on it to begin communicating about this task. And in order to communicate about the task, all you need to do is just start typing a message uh, here. Uh, then the next part is the assignee. Here we can make an assignment. So let's actually pick a task. So let's go, I guess everything will start from uh, story or design doc. So let's start with story. So let's say it's ready to start and I'm going to assign it to artist one. I'm going to set a start date of today and it's going to auto populate with assumptions about how long things take, but you can change this. Um, so let's say we're being very ambitious and we actually want the story to be done in a single day. So you can set these dates to whatever you need and you'll see that the duration automatically updates. So now this this is uh, this is ready to go. So I've made an assignment. I'm the production manager or the instructor and I've said okay this person's gonna work on this thing. You can also have multiple assignments. Let's say maybe artist one and artist two are gonna be working on story. So when they're ready to start work, they'll set this to in progress. So the first part of the production is identifying who's going to be doing what, making the assignments, setting the setting the schedule. And then once you have all that done, uh, and then it's ready to go back to the artist in terms of what they need to do. So this pattern is going to be repeated over and over. These are all just tasks, and they need the same thing to happen. Regarding pipeline steps, Pre-production needs to happen before production happens. Um, and post-production, of course, happens after after production. So that's the way that the uh, games situation looks. So if we come back to, to the overview, we'll see, again, our, our major menus options here. So games, levels, assets. So now let's look at uh, levels. So game is going to have multiple levels. This is just uh, something I created to actually populate this. Um, it also has a couple uh, pipeline steps, which is pre-production and production. So each level is going to need level design and concept, and each and the production is going to need uh, at least all of these things. Um, if you if you need to add some custom task, it's very possible. Uh, a production manager would just click here and say add task to select it. And then you'll get this pop-up. You'll give it the task name. Maybe it's something that wasn't captured by the templated tasks, that some custom thing that you need, like some custom task. Uh, you could set the assignee, the start and due dates, um, and give it a description, and it's going to be linked to uh, the particular level that you right-clicked over to uh, create the task. Okay, so after levels, uh, if you need, when you need to create levels, it's very easy. You just click on level and give the level a name, like uh, give it some description and use the game level template. This is very important because it's gonna, it's what creates all the tasks. Um, once you're done there, you just go ahead and create the level. And it's all set up. So that's, that's levels. Uh, as far as tasks and assignment, it's the exact same thing as what was explained in the context of a game. And then when we go to assets, Uh, it's going to be slightly more pipeline steps. We're going to have the design, the model, the texture, and the rig. 
and then finally the export where uh, an FBX will be generated that can be imported into Unity. So to create a task, like I said, when you fill out the spreadsheet, I can actually create them all in bulk. But if we need to create just one specific task, maybe something new emerged that we want to create, it's very, that's also very simple. It's the same pattern for creating levels. Um, you just click create new asset, uh, give it a name like uh, hero or whatever, uh, give it a type. So we'll say character. Uh, give it a task template. So since we're doing a game, we want to use a 3D game asset template. Uh, give it a description. And that's it. We create our asset. It's going to use a template to automatically create these tasks. And then again, we repeat the pattern. Uh, we set a status. We make uh, assignments. And we set start and end dates. Um, <clears throat> and this is the global status of the task of the sorry of the asset so if it's in progress that means that it's actively being worked on if it's ready to start it means you know we've made all of our initial assignments uh, we set our start and end dates and we're ready to uh, everything is going to be ready to start so we'll probably look like this when an asset uh, is completely ready to go and then it'll progress with in progress while somebody's doing the design and then finally it'll go to final uh, once that design is final the model will go into in progress it'll probably go and get a review the design should have gotten a review as well once the, the, the review is approved it'll go to final and the same thing here so an artist will be able to change this status uh, once it's set to ready to start they can set it to in progress uh, and to review. A manager will be able to either final it, uh, put it on hold, or say that it's not applicable. So, so then this is basically how things will be progressing and how you'll be tracking who's working on this particular pipeline step, uh, what's the schedule for that particular task, and what's happening regarding to that task. Again, we just click the task name and we'll have a communication thread uh, related to the activity uh, of the task. So that's games, levels, assets. And next thing is going to be versions and reviews. So I've created separate videos for how to use the Maya integrations uh, and the uh, Photoshop integrations. So let's say, for example, you're doing concepts and story storyboards. You would be using Photoshop, uh, and you would be using referring to that video on how to how to submit versions. So I also made another video on how to conduct reviews, which explains the version process uh, in detail as well. So let's assume you've watched that video. Um, once you have these versions, you're going to have uh, basically a bunch of uh, either still images or videos, play blasts of, let's say, maybe a character run cycle or of a model uh, that's just turning around, doing a 360 for evaluation. Uh, once you do that, um, so you have a bunch of videos, and I'm going to show you what that looks like in the context of another project. So we can look at the versions, for example, for this other project. And we can see uh, that it's a video. That's set up just to be uh, evaluated. So and then you can create annotations on the versions. Uh, say something like, you know, uh, Miami-Dade College isn't standing out, or maybe a little bit more resolution here, or maybe we just need a little bit more detail uh, or refine the general shape a little bit. And then you can just point those things out in terms of annotations and make uh, comments. So th these are versions. And then what you would do for reviewing is the production manager 
would come over to review uh, and let's say you're going to do either a dailies or a weeklies and they would say they would create a playlist uh, this is all covered in the review video in detail and they would associate versions to a playlist and show how to um, rather associate all those versions to the playlist and then when it's time for dailies you'd go to the screening room put this up on the large screen and just go to the individual versions and make the commentary uh, as as needed again this is all explained in the reviews video so this is a general overview of how to uh, how the game pipeline uh, setup would be working and one final note for games it's that Again, the Unity project is going to be housed on Unity Colab. So when you go to Unity Hub, once you've signed in with your user, when you go over to your projects, it'll it'll show you uh, any available uh, projects that you have that you're shared with on the cloud so your your capstone project will be work you'll be working on it using unity collab and you'll see it show up here uh, once you once you log in when you click that what you're gonna do is it's gonna ask you to download the whole project the entire unity project file and you're probably going to put that either on your shared network drive that'll actually be uh, will persist it more or you can download it locally onto your desktop uh, on, onto the particular machine that you're working on uh, so that means that you have two places where a lot of work is happening uh, I've made a video of unity collab on how to use it and I'm gonna put that in the comments uh, in the description of this video um, and that'll be how you're managing a lot of your work, a lot of your Unity related work, your C sharp files, your um, level creation, level lighting, level effects, uh, things of that nature. So the way that that's going to work with the files we're working with Shotgun is that your project, uh, you're going to be going into your assets and you're going to be going into your exported folder the published files and you're going to be grabbing the FBX's from here importing them into your unity project so this is so you're going to be grabbing the assets that are being generated whether it's uh, UI images uh, character rigs props etc you're going to be going into those folders and grabbing them and importing them into your unity project which is going to be managed by Unity Colab and that's the general workflow for the game pipeline and using Shotgun uh, to to manage the production of the game.